Hi, I'm Justine Murphy. And I'm James Lowe, and this is Light Matters for June 4th, 2014. On this week's show, a low-light laser technique regrows tooth cells, flexible transistors prompt the next generation of electronic screens, optogenetics controls memory, and three researchers earn the Kavli Prize in nanoscience. A new laser technique developed by a Harvard-led team has shown the potential for stem cells to regenerate tissue inside the body. This holds promise for regenerative medicine, specifically restorative dentistry. It also could benefit other areas of medicine, such as wound healing and regenerating bone. A low-power laser was used to illuminate tooth pulp in the molars of rodent subjects. Over a 12-week period, stem cells form dentin, the bone-like tissue that makes up the bulk of teeth. Culture-based experiments were also conducted to determine the precise molecular mechanism responsible for the regenerative effect of the low-light laser treatment. A regulatory cell protein, the transforming growth factor beta-1, was found to be the key in triggering the dental stem cells to grow into dentin. Traditional techniques require the removal of stem cells from the body and their subsequent manipulation in a lab before they are returned. The researchers say this new approach is simpler and paves the way to controlled treatment protocols. The research is published in Science Translational Medicine. Researchers from U.S. Department of Energy's Argonne National Lab have developed ultra-thin, flexible transistors that could lead to the next generation of screens for computers, smartphones, and televisions. At just 10 atomic layers thick, the transparent transistors maintain optimal performance in a wide range of temperatures. A strip of tape was used to remove a sheet of tungsten diselenide, a technique invented by scientists at the University of Manchester in England. Chemical deposition was then used to grow sheets of other materials on top, allowing the transistors to be constructed layer by layer. The researchers also measured the on-off ratio of the transistors, as well as the field effect carrier mobility, which measures how completely the electrons can move through. The transistors' abilities under stress were tested too by bending the films. Existing thin film transistor material cracked under such pressure, but the new transistor's properties did not change. The researchers planned to add logic and memory to the flexible films, which would enable development of not only screens, but also flexible and transparent TVs or computers. The research is published in Nano Letters. A new optogenetics technique could control memories, showing potential for treating Alzheimer's disease and other brain-related conditions. The new technique, developed by University of California San Diego researchers, has demonstrated the ability to deactivate and then reactivate memories in the brains of genetically engineered rats. This is done by stimulating nerves in the brain via synapsis. As part of the study, researchers stimulated a group of neurons in the rats' brains while also applying electric shocks. The animals learned to associate neural stimulation with pain and subsequently displayed fear behavior when it happened again. Analysis showed chemical changes within those synapses, which the researchers said is indicative of synaptic strengthening. Further testing showed that stimulating the same nerve group with low-frequency optical pulses weakened the circuitry. The rats no longer responded with fear to nerve stimulation as the memories of that pain association were erased. By using memory-forming high-frequency optical pulses, those same nerves were re-stimulated, which subsequently reactivated the lost memories. The findings could be applied to the treatment of Alzheimer's disease, in which beta amyloid peptide accumulates in the brain and weakens synaptic connections. This is similar to the way by which the low-frequency stimulation erased the rat's memories. The research is published in Nature. Three researchers who helped break the nanoscale barrier in optics have been awarded the Kavli Prize in Nanoscience, presented by the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. Thomas W. Ebison of Louis Pasteur University in France, Stefan W. Hell of the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in Germany and Sir John B. Pendry of Imperial College London will receive the awards in September and split a $1 million cash prize. The three have made transformative contributions to the field of nano-optics and have overcome limitations traditionally associated with optical microscopy and imaging. Join us next week for a report from CLIO, the annual conference on lasers and electro-optics in San Jose, California. I'll be tweeting from the show using the Twitter hashtag Cleo14. You can also follow me on Twitter at James F. Lowe. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. Email us with your questions or comments at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.